I'm Connor Delaney and I'm delighted you've joined me for my second Society Chat episode as ASCRS President. I've been asked in this episode to talk a little bit about myself. So as my accent gives away, uh, I was born in Ireland. Uh, although we spent a couple of years living in London, as I'll, I'll mention in a moment. I grew up as the eldest of five with four younger sisters. So that meant I was the quiet one at the dinner table, uh, listening and not talking too much. My mum was a physical therapist and my dad was a colorectal surgeon. So when I was uh, a young boy, we ended up moving to England for a few years and my dad trained and spent some time at St. Mark's in London. We came back to Ireland and the rest was pretty normal, normal high school. I, I went to a school in Ireland where we played rugby. So I, I grew up playing rugby and tennis. That was cut short at the age of 15 when I ended up having a series of about five or six operations on my knees um, for chondromalacia patellae actually. So in Ireland you go straight from high school to medicine. Uh, went into medicine. At a young stage in medicine I became interested in research and ended up uh, working with a senior trainee who was doing research in pancreatitis and that was really my, my first uh, foray into the academic side of, of medicine. So all of my initial um, research ended up being on pancreatitis. In Ireland then as you train um, you often go away in the middle of your training uh, for a research fellowship. So I did the first four years of training, which was general surgery, and I did the fellowship in the Royal College of Surgeons of Ireland, which is all very standard. And then I ended up being fortunate and getting to go and work with Dr. Tom Starzl at the University of Pittsburgh, because with my pancreas research, I've become interested in HPB and in transplant. So I ended up doing a master's in immunology, and doing a PhD in dendritic cell biology, which I ended up transferring home and graduating and finishing the lab work uh, during my senior surgical training. Senior surgical training is the last four years, and the last two years of that, uh, I used to work with a hepatobiliary surgeon and a colorectal surgeon. And I went into it because I was interested in HPB, but I ended up, not sure if it's genetic, uh, but ended up enjoying colorectal surgery enough uh, that that was what I decided to do. So then after finishing my training in Ireland, I decided to do an extra year of experience in colorectal surgery and came to work at Cleveland Clinic for a year as the International Fellow to work with Dr. Victor Fazio on the team there and then ended up staying for an extra year and a couple of extra years and 23 years later, and we're still in the US. So when I was at Cleveland Clinic, initially for six years, um, we ended up being at a relatively early period in the development of laparoscopic colorectal surgery, so I had the opportunity to well, do a lot of clinical volume, obviously, um, but based on that, do a lot of research and a lot of education and teaching, and we had many people come for courses. Um, so that, and working with colleagues like Dr. Tony Senegor and Tracy Hall and Scott Strong and a number of others, um, learned from them, um, and also uh, learned skill sets in teaching and, and working with others and uh, Dr. Senegor and I ended up teaching a lot of courses. So that, at an early stage, I think was probably a little formative in, in teaching me a little bit more about educating others at a fairly, fairly young stage in my career. I'd never seen myself as, as particularly being a, a leader or leading groups. I, I guess I hadn't thought that far ahead. But after spending time at Cleveland Clinic, uh, Dr. Jeff Ponsky uh, asked me if I would come to Case Western um, to build a colorectal group. So Case Western was obviously just across the street from Cleveland Clinic, it's probably half a mile away and still about 10 minutes from my house and my wife and family were very happy. So it was a difficult decision um, but it was really the first time when I thought about the opportunity uh, to try and build something myself and that um, exposed me to a lot of different decisions and thoughts, um, recruiting building teams, building research programs, building clinical programs. And I learned so much in that period. And as well as, you know, managing groups and I was vice chair of surgery, so looking at the operational side of things. So my, my foray into to leadership uh, was really um, something that came through an opportunity I was exposed to. And I, I think that's always been one of my learning lessons is to explore new opportunities as they come along. So working with the group at Capes Western, I became really interested in operations. Uh, and with working on laparoscopy, became interested in enhanced recovery. 
and uh, a few of us back at Cleveland Clinic published a paper in 2001 on fast track surgery which really was one of the first forays into enhanced recovery uh, in North America. But it learnt me a lot about operations and length of stay and um, trying to be efficient in how we, we care for groups and so it added uh, a skill set for want of a better word, certainly an interest uh, around leadership. And so that and working uh, with the department there I think led to the opportunity for me to move back to Cleveland Clinic uh, as chair of the Digestive Disease and Surgery Institute and that was a, a phenomenal group of colorectal surgeons obviously but also gastroenterologists, general surgeons, trauma, pediatrics. That at another level exposed me to working with bigger groups and, and you, you learn a lot of different skill sets and managing conversations and helping people. Probably before then, but certainly at that stage, I, I realized that what was most important to me was teams and people and building teams and helping people succeed. Uh, and that's, that's really what I've tried to do. Um, all along that journey, I had the chance to uh, be part of ASCRS. And that was a, a parallel pathway that was really so fulfilling. I think we have an amazing society. I have so many friends throughout the society all around the US and people I know and, and look forward to the meeting so much. And I think it gives you an extra opportunity to learn from others, to see how others do things. Um, you, you can always learn from others. And I then started participating in committees and had the chance to lead certain committees. And again, I think the more we give back to our society and the more we give back to specialty, then sometimes if you're lucky, certain doors open. And I've certainly uh, been lucky and then had the opportunity to move into leadership positions at ASCRS. And it's always been about trying to see how uh, I can contribute a small amount to what our amazing group are doing. Well, my family is the most important part of, of everything. So I have a 26-year-old son. Uh, Peter is a third year medical student. Um, we'll see if he ends up doing colorectal surgery, but at the moment he wants to do orthopedics. And I have a daughter who's 24, and Michelle did a master's in business analytics and is in risk and fraud banking, uh, and has an amazing career ahead of her. Incredibly proud of them, uh, but I've been incredibly blessed in the time we've had to spend together coaching soccer teams, traveling on trips, and, and all of it's been founded on the support I've had from my wife, Claire. Uh, we got married just before we went to Pittsburgh. I meant, mentioned we went to Pittsburgh for a couple of years research. Actually, when we came back to Cleveland, we had two young children. Uh, Peter was three and Michelle was one. Uh, but Claire has been my rock of support. And without her, I certainly couldn't have accomplished anything I've done. We've done everything that we've done uh, as a team. So now we're going to move into something that we're, we'll start to do regularly. I thought it'd be interesting for us as a society to hear a little bit more from the incredible committees we have and their leaders to understand some of the work that's going on throughout the society and throughout the organization. We're a large society, we have many committees doing amazing work and I thought a great committee to start with today would be to get an update from the Rectal Cancer Committee. The Rectal Cancer Committee is chaired by Dr. Samantha Hendron. Uh, Dr. Hendron is at the University of Michigan, has a particular interest in colorectal cancer and I'm lucky that she's here with us today and can give us an update uh, on some of the top priorities for the Rectal Cancer Committee. The mission of the ASCRS Rectal Cancer Committee is to promote high quality surgical care for rectal cancer in the United States. We have three main strategies for accomplishing this mission. The first is that we, um, we do updates and, um, and continuously improve the fundamentals of rectal cancer surgery course. And the second strategy is that we serve as the liaison between the ASCRS and the NAPRC, which is the Rectal Cancer Accreditation Program housed within the American College of Surgeons Commission on Cancer. And then our third strategy is to, um, is basically to be content experts in rectal cancer care and to share new uh, developments in rectal cancer care with the membership of the ASCRS.
So the Rectal Cancer Committee came to be um, through a merger of two prior committees. There was a Rectal Cancer Coordinating Committee, which was working toward creating an accreditation program for rectal cancer to try to promote high quality care within accredited uh, centers across the United States. Um, there was another committee, the Fundamentals of Rectal Cancer Surgery Committee, and that committee had the job of creating a course for surgeons. Um, and it would essentially be an educational course around rectal cancer care and rectal cancer surgery. Um, in 2020, those two committees were merged together to form the Rectal Cancer Committee. And um, that, that timing occurred because um, both committees had essentially accomplished their missions. Um, the Fundamentals Committee had created a first edition of the Fundamentals course and the Rectal Cancer Coordinating Committee had worked um, across multiple professional societies and uh, in particular with the American College of Surgeons to create the National Accreditation Program for Rectal Cancer. So the Fundamentals of Rectal Cancer Surgery course was launched in the spring of 2021. So it's been out for a little more than a year now. Um, about 600 surgeons have um, accessed the course. And so we're delighted to see that so many people have, um, have sought it out. The feedback that we have received has been very positive. Um, more than 90% of users who completed the course and did our evaluation said that they would recommend the course to, um, to their surgical colleagues. One of the goals of our committee is to um, bring the course and, and its um, educational value to more surgeons across the United States, including general surgeons, colorectal surgeons, surgical oncologists, really anyone who is doing surgery for rectal cancer. The Rectal Cancer Committee of ASCRS is a liaison between our society and um, the NAPRC, the National Accreditation Program for Rectal Cancer. The NAPRC was formed um, several years ago and it lives within the American College of Surgeons quality programs and specifically is under the umbrella of the, of the cancer programs uh, within ACS. Um, the NAPRC is an important tool for improving rectal cancer care in the United States. And we see our society as being this, uh, as being a really important part of, um, of bringing content expertise to the NAPRC as it, um, as it changes over time. Um, many of our committee members are also involved in the steering committees for the NAPRC. So we really see our committee and NAPRC as partners in um, promoting high quality care for rectal cancer, um, them through the accreditation program and us through our educational and um, liaison function. The ASCRS Rectal Cancer Committee sees as a part of its mission to remain abreast of the um, rapidly changing um, evidence in the field of rectal cancer care. A couple of examples are that even over the last couple of years, there's really been an explosion in the use of non-operative management for rectal cancer. And, you know, we can see that we need to change um, our course, the fundamentals course, and we need to change the NAPRC um, standards to reflect this, you know, really seismic shift in the way we're caring for these patients. Another example is, um, is uh, the recent announcement of the amazing responses of our rectal cancer patients with MSI high tumors to immunotherapy. And um, the way we accomplish the mission of remaining um, current with the latest evidence in rectal cancer is um, by, um, we, we have a, a huge committee of about 40 members and we've divided our committee into work groups. And our work groups are all working um, continually to um, update the content and the evidence of, of our course and to um, keep our committee at the forefront of these changes. 
And so um, one of the things we do is ensure that the ASCRS communications with the membership um, include um, the latest uh, practice changing updates in rectal cancer care. People will often ask, what can we do to improve the quality of care for rectal cancer as, as practicing surgeons? And you know, what I what I encourage people to do is, is to consider um, you and your colleagues um, participating in the Fundamentals of Rectal Cancer Surgery course, which you know really contains um, a wealth of information from um, the most you know from the most straightforward cases to the more um, complex and esoteric cases, and it contains um, helpful videos and uh, content, which I think is really valuable even to surgeons who do a lot of rectal cancer care themselves. I also think that um, engaging with the NAPRC standards is valuable for sites that are seeking accreditation and even sites that are not. Um, what NAPRC focuses on is the multidisciplinary care, which we know is so important for rectal cancer. And, um, and so um, familiarizing yourself with the uh, NAPRC standards, which change every year or two, um, to keep up with um, changes in practice um, and and within your own center seeking to adopt the standards of NAPRC toward accreditation or, or even not um, though those those incremental changes um, will improve the care of your patients um, you know a, across the whole um, course of the therapy. Sam, I just want to thank you so much. That was a great update. Uh, thank you also for the work that you and the team uh, on the Rectal Cancer Committee are doing. Obviously a critically important part of what we do as colorectal surgeons and it's, it's great to know uh, that it is in such good hands. So I want to thank Stuart Meyer for his help in arranging this video. This is certainly straying outside my comfort zone. Um, thank you Stuart and, and David Westman for all, all the arrangements in, in setting up the Society Chat. So with that we're going to sign off. I look forward to seeing you all again next month on the next Society Chat uh, where we will hear from another committee uh, and I'll give you some other updates on things going on across the Society. And always remember this is your specialty and ASCRS is your Society. You are part of this 122 year legacy of surgeons who have made our specialty what it is today. And together, we will make it all that it can be tomorrow. Thank you.